First lesson in Matthew chapter 5, verses 21 to 22. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of judgment. But I say unto you, that whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Perhaps you may say, since I was born, I have never killed. By this, you may only mean that you have never used gun, sword, or stick to kill any person. But you may not in any way deny that you have killed so many thousands with your thought, word, and look. When you said thou fool to that brother the other day, you committed one murder. Since then, you have repeated the same killing word to even a hundred people. Are you not a murderer? If you are jealous of the other girl because she is more beautiful than you, and say in your jealousy that she is too proud just to condemn her, you are a murderer. If you are annoyed with anybody simply because he is more talented than yourself, you have committed murder. If you suspect and say that our rich brother acquired this, if you try to block anybody's way, depriving him of his means of livelihood, you have committed murder. If you say like David and say, if you pray like David and say, O oh Lord, fight against them that fight against me, you have committed murder. David prayed like this. When he did not see the light, he was a warrior. When the light which is Christ did, when the light which is Christ died, not utter any even when persecuted. I will repeat this. When the light which is Christ did not utter anything even when persecuted, the scripture says of him, he was led as a sheep to the slaughter and like a dumb and like a lamb dumb before his sharer. So opened he not his mouth. We have seen this light. Why should we kill again with our prayers? Whoever prays like David is not a man of God. Instead, he is a murderer. We should be better men of God than those of old who committed murder. Otherwise, we are not fit to be called Christians. Christ said to his disciples, Accept your righteousness, exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Where then lies the wisdom of the people of this world who do not want to disarm and live as brothers when they know that every sin you commit will be used against you on the day of judgment? Second lesson. Matthew chapter 26 verse 52 Then said Jesus unto him, Put up again thy sword into its place, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. After Christ has commanded Peter against taking up the sword, any Christian who takes up the sword against anybody under any circumstances stands condemned. We have other swords which are more dangerous than that of steel. Bad words and bad swords. Bad words are bad swords. The evil thought we nurse against another person is a bad sword. Our eyes which look dangerously at people are bad swords. With all these swords, we commit more murder than those of old. Not many people will, like Peter, see Christ face to face telling them to put down their swords. 
God himself will not tell us more than what we are hearing in this gospel. If you care to take up your sword after hearing this gospel, God will not interrupt you until you finish doing your heart's desire. Then you will die by the very sword you took against someone else. When you lodge a complaint with the police requiring to be given a constable, you will be given one. But when it is discovered that you have given a false information, you yourself will be in big trouble for the police will turn around and prosecute you. Christ feared this repercussion. That is why he did not call upon his father to send legions of angels to defend him when the Jews arrested and killed him. And that is why he was free from the sin of murder and God raised him up to life again on the third day. This fulfills God's promise in Luke chapter 9 verse 24. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. Who among us today has succeeded in saving his own life? Is it not time for the whole world to put back their sword, seeing that they cannot be saved by defending themselves or by committing murder? Some people boast that God helped them to win a war if they had known that God does not wish anybody to be killed even in battle of war they would have no reason to rejoice especially as it is now quite clear that when we kill others we will also be killed by others. If you are thinking that soldiers are fighters are that soldiers as fighters are doing the work of God you are wrong. For how could they be doing the work of God by murdering? No matter how much a person may be preaching, no amount of patriotism warrants anybody to kill a fellow human being. If you had been making mistake of considering a murderer as a man of God simply because he preaches the gospel or claims to be defending your country, don't do so again because no murderer is justified before God. Soldiers are murderers. They are always fighting and killing. They are paid to commit this havoc. And we and are the governments who pay them not murderers? Every minute of the day Soldiers are busy thinking and planning how to attack or defend. As murderers, they themselves are dead already. In, Tim if in, in Timothy chapter 3 verse 13 we read, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse deceiving and being deceived. That is why soldiers today are killing and are being killed. We owe a duty to preserve life, not destroy it. For this cause, Christ humbled himself unto death. He preserved his good works and committed no sin so that he might be able to preserve the life of sinners and make them partakers of eternity. Golden text, Revelation chapter 13 verse 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. This faith made the saints to be patient in suffering all in suffering all things with the full knowledge 
that if they would never kill even their enemy with thought, word, or action, they will live eternal life. Like Christ, they choose to die instead of attacking anybody or committing any sin against humanity. For this reason, for this reason Peter was crucified head downward. He knew exactly what he should have done to defend himself. But fighters will not stop fighting until they shed their blood because of sin. Anybody who uses the sword to kill will also be killed with the sword. This gospel is given to all those who used to say they wish they could see God to ask him a question. Why men should die? This gospel is meant to answer that question by telling them that the reason why people die is that they commit murder, either in thought, word, or deed, or any of or by any of the ways mentioned in this gospel. For with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. Faith of the saints means having no gun, use nothing whatsoever with which to protect yourself, but surrendering yourself completely to God to take care of you. If you have such faith, you would not say as many people are fond of saying that while God is protecting them, it is needful that they protect themselves. What a foolish statement. How can a man protect himself if God alone does not protect him? We suffer most when we use ungodly means to protect and defend ourselves. It is then that we commit murder and die as murderers because defending ourselves means killing ourselves. Then we start to suspect our neighbors of poison, witchcraft, juju and such like things. We deceive ourselves. These things in themselves have no power for they do not exist at all. What exists which works to our detriment and death is the murder we commit every day by thinking evil, doing or speaking evil, thereby committing murder and dying away every day. So let nobody again say anything against God for whatever happens to him for whatever evil we brought on ourselves is what we have done to others as our gospel has revealed that anybody who kills will be killed just the same way and by the same means he used for what we sow we reap God is a righteous judge. If we hear his word in this gospel and do it, we shall have life everlasting. Whoever wants life should preserve the life of others. Whoever kills shall be killed. Those who have ears to hear, let them hear. May God bless is all the words. Amen. End of quote. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you, Father.